The sun, it's our solar system's engine. It's ferocious, a writhing mass of nuclear chaos. Man, things are weird getting weirder. How weird are things? NASA's got a new mission, and they're going to the sun. NASA plans to launch a spacecraft into the sun. Ooh, mm, that's weird. NASA's gonna touch the sun. Whereas old school weirdness used to have them take 21 years to build a replacement telescope for the Hubble. Rumor has it they're gonna do this from drawing board to the sun in 14 months. Stay cool. It stays cool and keeps power. Uh, Houston, this is. We've got a video message. Wave after wave after wave. This is a Thor News presentation. Hit the button, baby. This article is brought to us by Jason Davis over at the Planetary Society. Parker Solar Probe. Oh man, should have named it the German Solar Probe. But at least Alex Parker got a little. I'm worried this might go to his head. I'm surprised NASA's cool enough, though, to point out one of their cooler members. NASA renames upcoming mission to touch the sun. All right, is this related to the sun, baby? Yes, is my guess. I don't think they'd tell us that. NASA plans to launch a spacecraft into the sun. Ooh, mm, that's weird. What if it just has, like, the corona outside and then, like, a neutron star in the middle? I guess we'll find out, huh? This brings me back to Ulysses. This whole mission is going to make me talk about Ulysses. Way back in the day, they went over the above and below the poles of the sun, and then didn't talk about it much. I want to understand. The European spacecraft Ulysses. The spacecraft's orbit takes it over the south magnetic pole of the sun. Ulysses will next visit the sun's north polar region. Another thing is, I think this mission is cool, but knowing we had the head stereo and behind stereo to have 360 coverage of the sun, and then the head broke and it's super no data, so we don't get 360 coverage. I highly recommended replacing those both of those satellites, ASAP, but nobody at NASA listens to me, unfortunately. Or nobody high up. Why don't I read this article? On July 31st, 2018, a 20-day launch window opens for the Parker Solar Probe. It's a mission advertised as humanity's first visit to a star. The spacecraft will lap the sun 24 times as it helps scientists unravel long-standing questions about what goes on inside our star's outer atmosphere. A region called the Corona, extending millions of kilometers into space. Unrelated, Corona with a lime beer is delicious. To do so, the Alex Parker solar probe will dive through the Corona itself. Is Alex going to be on that thing? That sounds dangerous. So dangerous. Alex is unofficially part of the Thor News Space Bounce Squad. And, and you know, we're no stranger to danger. Eventually, buzzing the sun's surface by 5.9 million kilometers, that's just an eighth of the distance between the sun and Mercury at the planet's closest approach. The mission was previously named Solar Probe Plus, but that was too boring, so they decided to rename it. Over the years, NASA has sent probes all over the solar system. Another thing, are you sure you guys want to use the term probe? That has extremely negative connotations. I'm talking like alien fingers up people's butts type connotations. Where that may be cool for some people. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. Okay, off subject. So get back on target. But during an announcement today at the University of Chicago, NASA Associate Administrator Thomas Zerbuchen said the spacecraft's moniker would be changed to honor Eugene Parker. Oh, the scientist who predicted the existence of the solar wind more than 50 years ago. That's great, but why don't you honor German, man? He worked in the solar division under NASA for five different presidents. And he's a badass. So that was my suggestion. So they went with neither German nor Parker. Fantastic. All right, well, then I'm going to name it the Peter Parker. <sighs> NASA has never named a spacecraft after a researcher during their lifetime. Who turns 90 next month was on hand to accept the honor. Okay, I'm sorry. I didn't know he was alive. I'm sure you were awesome, Mr. Parker. I'm sure you were awesome, Peter. And I wish they would make a Spider-Man movie where Spider-Man was really, really funny. Because Spider-Man is the only really, really funny superhero out there. Sometimes I daydream about a Spider-Man movie with the young Mitch Hedberg. That would be awesome, you know? Oh well. Let's get back to the science. I'm certainly greatly honored to be associated with such a heroic scientific space mission, Peter Parker said. By heroic, of course, I'm referring to the temperature, the thermal radiation from the sun, and the extreme measures developed to survive that radiation and collect scientific data. Now if we can go around the sun 24 times that closely and survive, you'd think we could do the same shit with Venus. You know what I'm saying? And it makes me sad. I'm like, why don't we have anything around Venus? We got 7,000 satellites and 
rovers, spider bots, Martian Martian sex robots walking around, ballets, marinaries. You got nano Martian bots. You got explorers. You know, we got just like a giant freaking science fiction army of robots on Mars so that they can send us pictures of Martian dirt. Like, oh, look, new pictures of Martian dirt. And we can all go, yay. And we got nothing on Venus, around Venus. Wow, Venus is so interesting, fascinating, amazing. And she's been looking mighty bright in the sky lately. She likes to drop her tail. She drops it like it's hot. Um, It's like, we don't go to Venus because Venus is hard. You know, it's like, who are you guys? And they're like, oh, we're new, we're, you know, we're, we're NASA. I'm like, oh, okay. The sun's atmosphere is weird. Now, I like this. This article seems to have taken a bit after me. You know, I'm one of the top solar scientists on the planet. <sighs> Another thing that's weird. People don't take my science too seriously, and I finally figured out why. I thought it was because that's hilarious. And make people think. And I don't always draw conclusions. I'll let you guys, I'll let you guys do the concluding yourselves. I need people to be critical thinkers, man. But no. The main reason I don't think people take me seriously as a scientist is that I look like a tiger. No, that's not it. Unattractive people are seen as better scientists. And so I am way too handsome to be taken seriously as a scientist. I Man, I'm so handsome, I'm borderline pretty. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's right. And you know, it's a burden. Because I want people to like me for my sense of humor. And that's why I had to gain some weight. Let my teeth go yellow. And act crazy. Just so people would leave me alone. I mean, have you ever been in a large room where everybody's coming on to you? It is creepy. Um, anyway. Enough about me. Okay. The sun's atmosphere is weird. Intuitively, we humans know that the closer we get to a heat source, the hotter we get. The sun's atmosphere, however, doesn't quite work this way. Scientists call this phenomena the coronal heating problem. Whoa. Shouldn't it be a coronal heating question? The surface, called the photosphere, has a temperature of about 6,000 Kelvin. This is where sunspots appear. And sunspots are those dark blobs you can see through a solar telescope. Okay, next comes the chromosphere. Here, the temperature increases from 6,000 to 20,000 Kelvin in a distance of less than 2,000 kilometers. This is where the solar prominences, those massive looping strands of burning gas, get their start. Are you talking about filaments? And filaments are like umbilical cords to the sun baby. And then finally, there's the corona, the long wavy region extending millions of kilometers into space, which you can see during a solar eclipse. The temperature here climbs over a million degrees. This is also where the solar wind, made of high-energy particles, responsible for auroras and finicky satellite behavior, blasts away from the sun at 400 kilometers per second. Solar scientists don't quite understand all the mechanisms in play in the corona. How does it get so hot? And what causes the solar wind there to erupt here with such ferocity? These are the questions the Parker Solar Probe will try to help answer by making direct, death-defying measurements of the corona for the first time ever. Uh, that's pretty exciting. As a big fan of solar science, I find this exciting, especially at a time when the sun is acting so wild, weird, and wacky, which I find interesting that NASA's got a mission that they want to accomplish in such a very fast amount of time for them. All right, we've learned so much already. This is going to have to be a part two. So stay tuned. Part two will be coming up soon. Ladies and gentlemen, this is part of the Support and Save Thor News One Crazy Summer fundraiser for rent and bills in August because I am an independent channel and that's how I stay so awesome so if you can contribute or donate today please do so at my PayPal link which I will leave located in the information box God bless everyone stay cool and thanks for being awesome see you on the sunny side